a chairman to please come on through the dais. I also request Mr. Rajnikanth Surat to come on to the dais. Before I start, may I request all of you to please put your mobile phones on silent mode. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Nirmalia Bakchi. On the dais, Shri K. Padmanabhaya, Chairman, Court of Governors. Shri Anjani Kumar, Director General of Police, Government of Telangana. Shri Rajnikanth Surat, Member of Professor S. Venugopal Rao Memorial Charitable Trust. Our Vice Chairman, Mr. Garrett. Mr. Mahesh Bhagwat, former DGP Mr. Mehra, and other distinguished guests on the floor. A warm welcome, Shri Kamal Kumarji. A warm welcome to this fourth oration on the occasion of the birth centenary of Professor S. Venugopal Rao. This lecture is endowed by Professor Venugopal Rao Memorial Charitable Trust and will be delivered today by Shri Anjani Kumar, DGP, Government of Telangana, on policing in a changing society, challenges at various levels. And it's my present duty to introduce our speaker to you. Shri Anjani Kumar studied at the University of Delhi among his many professional achievements. He was selected for the Indian Police Service in 1990, received training at Sardar Ballabhai Patel National Police Academy, won the Maharaja of Tonk Cup for the best horse rider in his batch, received the R.D. Singh Cup for being the best swimmer of his batch, served as the captain of the basketball team during training, among his work experience and awards, worked at various locations in Warangal, Mahbubnagar, Nizamabad, Guntur, and Prakasham. Served with the United Nations in Bosnia in 1998 and 1999, and received the UN Peace Medal twice. He was awarded the Indian Police Medal and the President's Police Medal for Distinguished Services. Received the Internal Security Medal for serving in Naxal, lifting extremism affected areas. Received the Election Commission of India Award for Best Election Practices in Lok Sabha Election, which was presented by the Honorable President of India. He has also been awarded with Ati Utkrisht Seva Padak by the Ministry of Home Affairs. His previous positions were Director General, Anti-Corruption Bureau, Telangana State, Commissioner of Police, Hyderabad, Additional Director General of Police, Law and Order, Telangana State, Additional Commissioner of Police, Law and Order, Hyderabad City, Inspector General of Police, Warangal Region, Deputy Inspector General of Police, Nizamabad Range, Chief of Greyhounds, which is an elite anti-national force, and he's currently the Director General of Police, Government of Telangana. So warm welcome, sir. And with these words, I now request our Chairman, Shri K. Padmanabhaya, to give his opening remarks. Good evening, friends. I join my, the, my Director General in welcoming the Chief Guest of this evening, Shri Anjani Kumar. He gave you a, a detailed introduction about the Chief Guest. 
but I have seen uh, Anjani Kumar during his performance as police commissioner here during his full tenure. I think uh, he has done excellent work, you know, of the highest order. And Telangana police is ranked today as one of the best police forces in the country. So it's a pleasure to have him here. Uh, I just wanted to say a few words about uh, Professor uh, Venugopal Rao, on whose name this uh, oration is organized. He was a policeman. Uh, he rose very high in the police hierarchy. And uh, he ended up as uh, the chief of the Bureau of Police Research uh, in those days. There's one organization which does a lot of uh, mental and work, you know, on the police, uh, this one, various reports and all those things. But though he was a policeman, he preferred to be called professor. So he was an academic man, a research man. And uh, all through, he tried to bring to the police work his knowledge of uh, criminology, sociology, and psychology. So he had written many articles. He was a well revered officer. So I'm very glad that on his name, we are doing this one. This is the fourth lecture in the series. We had eminent speakers before. Uh, Srimati Kiran Bedi, the hefty police officer, you know, the, the first lady police officer of the country. She was the first speaker here. And I remember Sri Anjani Kumar was also there that day. And uh, followed by Justice Chalameshwar, uh, who was the judge of the Supreme Court. He gave the second one. And the third lecture was given by no other than my friend, uh, Shri Kamal Kumar, who was director of the Police Academy, National Police Academy. So there is a good tradition behind your, this one. And uh, people are very anxiously waiting to listen to you. I just wanted to say a bit about the police. You know, police is the most visible and most commented organization of the government anywhere. And the basic foundations of any modern society is the rule of law. If you don't have rule of law, no society can prevail. And um, the police have to take a lot of burden in maintaining this rule of law. We say maintaining law and order. I am not just confining you to law and order. I am talking of a broad concept of rule of law. Wherever a law is being breached, the police come into the picture. You know, they say, a case would be filed, police would investigate and all that. And so, being the most visible arm of the this one, uh, anybody can comment, anybody can criticize and say this or that and all those things, you know. But without police, you can't uh, live. Without air, you can't breathe like that. Without police, no society can run, you know. That's one thing. Now, our ancient uh, uh, books have always said, how do you handle a sort of uh, dissent or uh, opposition and all that. They always say, Sama, Dana, Beda, Danda, Dando, Paita. The four types. Sama is, try to talk to him nicely and say, hey, what have you done? Have you stolen this material or whatever it is? Talk in a nice manner. If it doesn't work, Dana, you bribe the fellow and then you say, I would give you this reward. So would you sort of tell us what exactly has happened? The third one is Beda, means create a dissension between two fellows. If there are two criminals, play one against the other and try to get uh, the truth you know, out of that. Ferreting out truth is not easy, let me tell you. The fourth one is Danda. Danda. So last resort, you use the Danda you know, to get the truth. The point is, now how much of each one of these you use, which one you use, at what stage of the investigation you use, all these are very complex matters. It's not simple. So that's why when people say that police custody may usko mara hai or something else has happened, if it becomes necessary, you must do because the, our, our own books have said that these are the four types, you know. So, in fact, I remember I traveled quite a lot across the world. One day when I was in Cambodia, the taxi driver was praising the Indian movies very much. I said, what is so special about the Indian movies? He said, Saab, aapka police wale hai, criminals ko and politicians kitna marta hai. And fantastic, he said. So that is their perception of the greatness of the Indian police, you know. So this is by way of a joke. But uh, the fact remains 
that police have a very difficult job. Let me tell you, in a formal way, I was head of the police force in a way in the country. I was the Home Secretary for some time, about four years. So I know how it works. I would, without any hesitation, say that for an honest police officer, for an honest policeman, it is a very, very difficult job. It is one of the most difficult jobs that are there whether it is the DGP or whether it is the constable. For an honest man, it is a very difficult job. But then they do it. I mean, 24-hour duty and all that. But thank God, in the recent years, the, the conditions of living, the housing, the salaries, the training uh, have improved quite a lot. They've improved quite a lot. And uh, so, well, that is there. Then, uh, Police performance. People criticize about police performance. Now, I can't talk about the police performance because uh, the police is a state subject and it varies from state to state. And how the police perform would also depend on the ethos of that particular state, the population, their composition and all that. If there is a Haryanvi police officer, I don't know what state he comes from. You can easily identify that fellow from his language, you know, the rough language. You know. A Punjabi police officer would uh, behave in a different uh, uh, milieu. And a Gujarati police officer, I think he would have his own uh, this one. So, and then it also depends on the challenges and the time. You know, I am from the Maharashtra cadre. So, the Bombay underworld, you know, there are so many series and all that. I am very familiar with the whole picture, you know. So, at one time, the Bombay policemen can do no, no mistake. Uh, perfect. Uh, most uh, cinemas produced in the 50s and 60s are based on the police fellows, you know, cracking the cases and all that. But now it has gone to a situation where the police commissioner of uh, Maharashtra has uh, sort of told the people that his minister was asking him to collect the haftas of how many crores, 100 crores or whatever it was. So that is the stage to which it has come. So the police work varies from state to state. So I don't want to comment on that, but I want to comment about the uh, Telangana state. I think it's, as I mentioned already, I think it's one of the best uh, possible forces. And then uh, one thing is we must uh, thank the state government and the chief minister because he has given good resources to them. Uh, at one time, people used to say, now your car would be an old, uh, you know, 30-year-old car, it would break down anywhere, whereas the criminal is going in a first-class car, you can't even chase him, you know. How do you do policing work unless you have proper... There are critics who have said when the, all that uh, fleet was given to you, they said, look, this man is pampering the police force and all that. It's not true. Unless you have the equipment and even the mobility, how do you chase these people? So the resources have been given and uh, thanks to the state government. Two, adoption of modern technology and uh, cyber crime. Being in Hyderabad, they have done extremely well. Thanks. Ten years ago, when I came from Delhi to India, first thing I've seen is a chalan had come on my phone saying that this is where you should pay. You should pay online. And then I was surprised. I was in Delhi. I didn't see it even in Delhi. I said, fantastic. If this is so good. And then the other day, somewhere in a bylane, my fellow had parked the car. Immediately a notice had come saying that on a service road you have parked. So even on service roads, you have your cameras and vigilance and all that. I'm told Hyderabad has got more, uh, the most number of uh, uh, cameras anywhere in the cities, you know. So that's very good. <clears throat> Cyber crime they are doing. The third one is better quality of constabulary. When I take my walks, I do talk to the constables in front because I walk in front of the, the police commissioner's office now. That's where I live. So I sometimes get into a chat with them. Earlier, they used to be dumb fellows, you know, 8th standard pass or 10th pass. Now there are graduates in the constabulary. There are double graduates. There are master's degree holders and all that. And they talk about computer, software, this, that, and all those things. Things have improved substantially. And so the fourth one is the special attention they had given to the women. The she teams and all that. Again, I remember when I came some 10 years ago, eight, till about 8, 9, 7 years you no, know, this uh, chain snatching, when you are going on a scooter, you know, somebody comes and just snatches your chain. 
I don't hear of those things now. So things have substantially improved. And then uh, control of drugs and narcotics, which is a uh, big thing in Hyderabad, being the uh, cine field and all that. So in all that areas, they've done extremely well. So I don't want to take the thunder out of his speech, but I just wanted to mention some of these things so that we are appreciative of the good work you are doing. And uh, I leave the floor now to you to uh, tell your experiences and your uh, vision of the police force for Telangana. Thank you. So, but before that, uh, let me request our chairman to uh, welcome Shri Anjani Kumar with a flower bouquet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I now request Sri Anjani Kumar to give his speech. A very good evening to all of you. <clears throat> Every religion talk of saints, prophets, avatars. Right from my childhood, I was fascinated by the Jain Tirthankars. Somehow the name was very fascinating to me. Tirthankar, what does it mean? When I grew up, then I read about it. As per the Jain tradition, Tirthankars are those who who are enlightened themselves, but they remain on earth or come back to earth to help common human being to cross the, the ocean of ignorance. These are Tirthankars. I consider Professor Venu Gopal Garu and Sri Padmanabhaya Garu to be the Tirthankar of bureaucracy. They have seen everything. They have done everything. They have experienced everything. But they are still here to help us to cross the ocean of ignorance or ocean of challenges. I am indeed very humble in the presence of Sri Padmanabhaya Garu and all my seniors. Mr. Kamal Kumar, Mr. Mehra, <clears throat> all my colleagues, Murli Krishna, Mahesh Bhagwat, His Excellency, and to add to enthusiasm and vibrancy, the youngest batch of IPS officers of Telangana cadre, all the ASPs under training. I remember as ASP under training, when I first called on Mr. Anand Ram, late Mr. Anand Ram, who had retired much before we joined the service. But somehow I met him and then he had mentioned that when he was transferred from Adilabad to Nellore, he had an old Fiat car and he remembered putting that Fiat car seven times on a boat to cross a small river before reaching Nellore. Now, why I cite, why I mention this example, that from this time, from Mr. Anand Ram's time to my time, how things have changed, when every 15 days, there is an inauguration of a new flyover in the Prime Minister. How things have changed and how things have changed so fast. 30, 35 years from now, when the present batch of ASPs, when they will be at the helm of affairs, what would be the situation perhaps you and I cannot imagine. 
the pace of change is so fast. I was told that I must acknowledge my senior, Madam Bahuna is here. Whatever we do in our department, whatever good we do, there is a bit of contribution from each of our seniors. And whatever Mr. Padmanabhaya Garu has mentioned, it is all because the department has the privilege of having such senior and wonderful officers, some of whom are sitting here. I was told that 100 years from now, 100 years back, 95% of the population, they used to live in the same area where they were born, educated, married, worked, and died within 25 kilometers radius of the place of their birth. This was 100 years back. And now, within 10 years of a person's life, 90% they move out of 25 kilometer radius. And another 10 years, they do not know which city they will be, perhaps which country they would be. How fast things are changing. And this pace of change was very aptly written 20 years back by Alvin Toffler when he was talking about future shock. That the pace of change would be the biggest challenge. And not only the police department, but every organization, every bureaucratic setup, every corporate sector, the biggest challenge is how to cope up, how to manage the fast changing platform. <clears throat> 1945 physics book, which was taught at MIT then, the textbook said that it would not be possible for mankind to develop a rocket to take a payload to moon. Within 25 years, it was proved wrong. Not only a payload, payload, but human being went to, went to moon. Compared to that, when we see now the computing capacity of cell phone, we are now I think Apple 15 Pro is the latest. Apple 7 itself had crossed the computing capacity of the computer which had led Apollo to, go, to send mission on moon. So this is the computing capacity. It has its own challenges. And I would try to touch those things during my talk. <clears throat> Changing society, when we say, I would like to start with two examples. Last week itself, there was an article in a leading newspaper in London. Over 1,000 London police officers were taken off the street. A leading London daily carried an article saying that the Met Police has been trying to rectify the challenges, the difficulties which the police organization is facing there. Over 1,000 metropolitan police officers were suspended or sent on restricted duties, what we call it here, attachment to the headquarters, or in many states in North, it is called line hazir hona. It is nothing but the same. So out of 34,000 police force, one in 34 has been indicted of some charge or the other. So a great challenge. Let us come to USA. <clears throat> In 2019, as per the record published in one of the articles of Washington Post, in that year, 2019, 1,004 people were shot and killed by police 
in the USA. Another survey group called Mapping Police Violence says from 1980 to 2018, more than 30,000 people have died in police firing in USA. Coming back home in India, in 2021, of which the latest data is available, there were 6,164 criminal cases registered against police officers. What does it mean? That every day, approximately 17 criminal cases are registered against one police officer or the other in India. This is apart from the minor and the major misconduct for which departmental actions are taken without registration of FIR. Indeed, a major challenge to the police leadership at all level, level not only in India, but globally. Some country, some organization, they accept it. Some try to underplay it. More than three decades back, when our batch graduated from the Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy, the training was called modern. <clears throat> and both the trainees and the trainers took pride that the police academy has taught us well to tackle the dark underbelly of the Indian society. In the combined state of Andhra Pradesh, the young ASPs, we all were posted to subdivisions which were highly infested by left-wing extremism, commonly known as Naxalism. It remained our prime challenge for more than two decades before we could claim to have contained it completely. Before dwelling into the present scenario, let me mention in very brief the evolution of crime. Homo sapiens sapiens, that is what we are supposed to be. Wise men, as the Latin term says. As the society grew, the nature of crime changed. When our ancestors were food gatherers, the crime was petty theft, quarrel, assault, sometimes murder, over collection of food or over selection of mates. This was the only motive of crime for thousands of years. From food gatherer, we became food producer. And then came the concept of surplus. A group of people started having surplus production. It led to trade, exchange. So the crime also became complex. Group of people started collaborating, conspiring to loot the caravans. And that is how the conspiracy angle, the common mind, the, the, it, it, it started. Meeting of the mind, the mens rea guilty mind. Subsequently, the industrial revolution came and which completely changed the society. Not only machine brought changes in the socio-economic dynamics of the Europe and the world, but also the nature of crime. Without going into these details, we come to the post-industrial society and now the contemporary society which can be called the cyber society which is in itself a great boon and a great challenge. It's both, both two in one. And that is why I always quote that from cycle patrol to cyber patrol, it has been a big journey for the police. When the Indian Penal Code defined crime, it linked it to a jurisdiction. And that is why there was a police station 
which had a earmarked geographical area as its jurisdiction and so was the court which had an earmarked jurisdiction within which any incident of crime can be reported investigated put on trial and then the court will give judgment now the greatest challenge of the cyber world is that this geography has disappeared the physical definition of jurisdiction has no meaning at all a young teenager in some village sitting in eastern europe or america or africa can hack thousands of computer of hyderabad bangalore or anywhere else the entire definition of crime has changed a great ch challenge indeed so all the earlier attempts whether it is the code of hammurabi whether it is the roman tablets whether they, it is the indian manuscript manusmriti all have gone into the shelves of archives because of the fast changing nature of society technology and its impact on police <clears throat> talking about the present ecosystem of which we are an integral part i would like to define certain challenges by citing few examples from harshad mehta to abdul karim telgi and ketan parik these cases exposed the lack of preparedness of our policing system and the entire criminal justice system harshad mehta in 1992 the famous indian security scam stock manipulation led to scandal valued 1.3 billion us dollar it completely exposed the loopholes in the indian banking system and the bombay stock exchange the law enforcing agencies including the police were not found equipped at all to prevent or even to detect this crime which was happening for a number of years abdul karim telgi the printing counterfeit stamp paper scam through 300 agents he sold stamp papers in to bulk purchasers to the tune of 3.8 billion us dollars he had once it is told given tip to a bar girl in mumbai the tip amount was rupees 90 lakh to a bar girl in andheri his net worth in 2003 was 17000 crores <clears throat> ketan parik who was earlier chartered accountant to his friend harshad mehta manipulated the bombay stock exchange from 1998 <clears throat> to 2001 and artificially rigged prices of certain chosen securities referred to as k10 stock for example z telefilms zoomed from 127 to 10000 visual soft rose from 625 to 8500 sanata rose from 990 to 3000 in just few months and then a sharp fall precipitating into a major catastrophe at the stock exchange how quick or how fast we are to cope up with this changing scenario a major challenge <clears throat> sometimes we are the, poly, the 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 problem or you are the problem we all of us are the problem how i will cite an, a small example to elaborate this the black death of child birth in the early 18th century europe and subsequently which went to usa was a very very scary and famous incident immediately after child birth mothers were dying morning the doctors were doing autopsy 
and afternoon same doctors were doing delivery for children it continued for 30 years despite an article written that it is happening because of lack of hand wash and basic sterilization sometimes we are the problem <clears throat> recently there was nationwide reaction when a colored man was brutally assaulted by a cop in the usa we all saw it on the television that is why we have to pause and look within this remains a major challenge at all levels of police leadership to identify the problem within there are certain crimes <clears throat> which have led society and the judiciary to define crime to change the course of crime detection and prevention i will cite two examples first from australia they have a law called no child left behind policy it happened because i think in the 80s a child did not return home from school and just disappeared after 5 years the dead body was found somewhere and then during investigation they came to know that he was left behind at a particular bus stop did not have money and therefore did not get into the bus subsequently two people two person came abducted him assaulted him and he was killed the supreme court of australia passed a law that every bus driver it is mandatory for them to pick up the child if the child is alone and drop him home <clears throat> in india the famous dk basu judgment which defined the process of arrest because it was alleged that there was lot of misuse and lot of irregularities lack of uniformity in in procedure and subsequently it was incorporated into the crpc much recently the arnesh kumar judgment which the court found that in 498a the dowry death cases and dowry harassment cases and harassment by in laws to the lady it was found that the section was grossly misused because in many fir 95 year old parents in parents in law were also made as made as accused as a result the arnesh kumar judgment passed passed by justice chandra mauli and other made it mandatory that any crime less than with less than 7 years of punishment the first notice under 41 crpc should be given now these are all examples of highlighting the fact that sometimes the problem is within and that is why it has to be corrected internally first and if we fail then judiciary has to come much recent contemporary issues <clears throat> which also exposes the challenges of policing and criminal justice system at various levels the manipur state riot and the clashes which are happening may 2023 onwards the ethnic violence have erupted in manipur between maithi and kuki one of our officers sitting here has worked there mahesh about 300 plus people have died so far 900 injured and what is more alarming is 70000 displaced violence is continuing even after 4 months rape as a weapon has been used which has tarnished the image of entire humanity demand for scheduled tribe status is said to be the cause but what is more alarming is availability of sophisticated weapon in the hands of private civilian and the neighboring border of myanmar remains a matter of concern 
the social fault lines as seen in various reservation issues in india earlier during mandal commission subsequently during jat reservation issue we have seen violence and disruption of public order including cancellation of more than 200 trains within 4 days issue of separate identity leading to animosity fueling regional passion maharashtra should be only for the marathis tamil nadu should be only for the tamils punjab should be only for the punjabis have in the past led to strong sentiments leading to public violence we read that in 1993 the punjab terrorism was curbed it was over but in 2007 an incident which was much which was not much talked about happened in punjab in 2007 in ludhiana a cinema hall there was a blast outside the cinema hall it killed six people and 42 were injured what is more important is the cinema hall was showing a bhojpuri movie <clears throat> 5 kg of rdx was found to be was used in that few arrests were made but the case ended in acquittal which is more alarming social fault lines is not part of only one country what happened recently in paris in 2023 also called the nahel marzok rights named after the person who was fatally shot in an encounter in a sub urban colony in paris few deaths were reported official record says 800 police officers were injured injured 1000 plus buildings were damaged 6000 vehicles were burned the damage is estimated to be in euro 650 million when a most developed country and the most developed city like paris in the world can have such mayhem imagine the challenges before us in various cities civil unrest is not uncommon in west in 2005 the french riots were in reaction to the death of two minority teenagers electrocuted while hiding from police in an electric substation president jack chirac has to declare emergency protest continued for 3 weeks and led to 4000 arrest <clears throat> in france racial profiling and false reporting in traffic stop is said to have contributed to few rights we must remind ourselves that we are more diverse a country than any country in the world this is a challenge the france <clears throat> earlier in los angeles three day riots <clears throat> continued which led to damage of 3800 buildings over acquittal of four police officers of the LAPD who were charged with using excessive force in arrest and beating of rodney king the incident was video recorded by a civilian and put on social media the riot caused death of 63 people to check the riot 10000 policemen were deployed in los angeles many los Angel angeles residents bought weapon for self defense against fear of such violence <coughs> when they say <clears throat> then what would be the future of crime i would say what future it is already here the foundation has been laid <clears throat> i'll cite one more example we all have seen the live telecast of what happened in mumbai from 26th november to 29th november 2008 <clears throat> 175 people died 
from India, USA, Israel, Germany, Australia, Canada, France, Italy, UK, Netherlands, Japan. So really a first international terror attack in India. 300 plus <coughs> injured. 10 members of Lashkar-e Toiba from Pakistan carried out 12 coordinated shooting and bombing attack which lasted four days across the, across the city. Important places like Taj Mahal Palace, Leopard Cafe, Victoria Terminus, Trident were attacked. They had first hijacked an Indian fishing boat, killing all five on board. Subsequently, they landed at Kolaba and the rest we all saw live. <clears throat> what was so special in that attack? Apart from the gravity and the magnitude of the terror attack, what was more important there was that perhaps for the first time in the world, a terror incident was being masterminded and orchestrated with a terror control room, with an operation center, with a war room across the border in Pakistan. Live monitoring of the entire incident was done by the mastermind sitting in Pakistan. They were watching all the news channels and giving direct direction to the terrorists who were in the hotel and other places, guiding them about all the incidents when the NSG commandos are getting heli dropped and what to take precaution and how. When they found certain person hiding in a bathroom, they sent the picture to the mastermind who verified it in the Google and other platform and, and realized that the real identity was this and decided to kill him. So who would survive and who would be killed would be decided by the social media, media picture, which all of us are happily uploading. <clears throat> what is more important in this, that attack was the terrorists were not just armed with deadly weapon and grenade, but they were armed with technology, which is more dangerous. <clears throat> Social media monitoring, not only by the security agencies, but by the criminal groups, by the terror groups is a matter of great challenge. Use of VOIP, mobile phones, and other such gadgets has become too common now. The plus side of the technology is also there. <clears throat> During the military dictatorship of Argentina, 1976 to 83, many, many children were abducted and they were just found missing. With the help of <clears throat> AI and with the help of predictive analysis, very large number of children have been traced now after so many years. Perhaps this was not possible earlier. <clears throat> it also exposes certain things. Perhaps we <clears throat> need to talk about it. I think last month there was a conviction in, in UK. A British nurse, Lucy Letby was sentenced to life in prison after being found guilty in the worst in the worst child killer case <clears throat> she had murdered seven babies and tried to kill six others it happened in 11 months between 2015 and 16 she killed infants by injecting them with air others with forced fed milk, and two were poisoned. <clears throat> How well we are prepared to handle such aberration in, in society. When a nurse who is supposed to have a heart of compassion, and when she is doing this, are we really prepared? Talking about, <clears throat> talking about the the, boat, the border challenges, the coastal security, it has a major impact in India because we have 4,000 kilometers of border with Bangladesh. 
1700 with Nepal, 500 plus with Bhutan, 1600 kilometers with Myanmar. Though with Sri Lanka, we do not have a border, common border, but the water border is perhaps more risky. Afghanistan is not our neighbor as far as present map is concerned, but the drug, produce, drug production, trade, and Islamic fundamentalism is a matter of great concern. Coastal security right from 1993 onwards has always impacted us. And the serial blasts of Mumbai in 1993 also exposed the weakness of the coastal security. As the Indian economy is growing, we are now fifth economy in the world. And as our Honorable Prime Minister has mentioned that in the new parliament, we will venture, we will make effort to become the third. And we will one day. It, it brings challenges of its own kind. Infrastructure. Economy cannot grow if it doesn't have a robust infrastructure. And therefore, infrastructure security and protection is a major challenge. <clears throat> I will give two examples about the threat about in this field. Recently, near Metcalf Railway Station, North California, very close to San Jose, few suspects opened the heavy metal cover of an underground vault on the side of a road. <coughs> Optical fiber cable were cut. Five minutes later, they did the same at another place and followed by some more places. It also led to firing by AK-47 type of weapon. About 100 bullets were fired. In the process, the shooters also fired at 17 giant electrical transformers. The attack lasted less than an hour. <clears throat> but the impact, the entire 9-11 system of the state collapsed. It took 27 days for the California state to restore all the services related to internet and other things. <clears throat> the case is still not solved. Much later, as recent as February 2022, last year, similar offense, similar offense were reported <clears throat> in another part of USA in which white supremacists, two persons were arrested who had bought ghost guns. Ghost guns are the guns which does not have a registration number. What in India we call Katta and Tapancha. Without serial number and they had fired at various places. Subsequently, they were called neo-Nazis, arrested. And, but by that time, many protests had taken place in the country. <coughs> warning, of dis warning and discovery of malicious cyber tools is a great challenge as the economy becomes more and more cyber. I am told <coughs> that the total cyber space of the world, right now we define, say, Jam Jubilee Hill Police Station has a jurisdiction of 15 square kilometers. But when we convert it into the cyber field, the entire cyber area to be monitored is 7.6685 GB into 10 to the power 11. How many zeros you can add, you can imagine. Is it possible to monitor? Is it possible to know what hap is happening in the, in the dark, dark net? As per a US research finding, only 6% of the data hacking is actually known to the system administrator. 94% of the data breach go unnoticed. Even those who find out that there is a security breach, it takes them an average of 211 days. So imagine the data compromise continues for 211 days. 
they say every technology has the use and abuse. Fire was the first technology. It made our ancestors cook food and scare away the animal. But subsequently, it was also used for burning of houses. In India, we have a lot of proactive measures by, by government. Establishment of NTRO, National Technological and Research Organization, a technical intelligence agency under the NSA, which is the nodal agency for all critical information in India, including air traffic, power sector, communication services. <clears throat> Similarly, NatGrid, the national intelligence grid, is basically for sharing network that collate, collates data from standalone databases of various departments and ministries. It came into existence after the 200, 2008 Mumbai attack. Some of the crimes which are mistakenly categorized as future crimes, but is actually happening. <clears throat> Internet of things, the buzzword now, but what it is actually? It is nothing but Internet of things to be hacked. Anything which is connected to inter Internet is liable to be hacked. Today, the Internet is of the size of a golf ball, one expert has said. Today, the internet is of the size of a golf ball. Tomorrow, it will become the size of a sun. Imagine the surface, surface area to be monitored and checked then. Bitcoin mining. Healthcare system and hospitals, if they are hacked. Armed robot equipped with artificial intel intelligence, given assault rifles, can be a perfect tool for mass killing. DNA of, DNA of a person left at a tissue paper by a cigarette butt or a Coke glass can be lifted very easily and dropped at a scene of crime to implicate innocent person. Diabetic pumps. I am told US has about 5 lakh diabetic pumps in which the, the computer chip senses the, the restriction of flow of insulin in the body. And accordingly, the pump implanted inside the body releases the insulin. What if that machine is hacked and instead of one gram of insulin, the entire pump is empty? <clears throat> Another example recently happened in Miami jail riot, where all the autom automated gates of, of Miami jail was hacked and it got opened. As a result, it led to massive riot, killing many criminals. They fought and a lot of injury to the jail staff. VIP security, another challenge. I don't want to go into the details. We are familiar with the parliamentary parliament attack, the Rajiv Gandhi assassination, and other things. The drone, the drone bombs, both the optimist and the pe pessimist constitute the society. The optimist made the aeroplane. The pessimist made the parachute. Both are important. The same thing applies to the drone. Imagine a payload with a chemical powder getting sprinkled at a gathering at a gathering of thousands can lead to major devastation. <clears throat> Prison management is another issue because large number of radicalization, formation of new gangs, as our capacity of the jail is already stretched to 130% of its occupancy. Learning of soft skill is more important because the interaction of police officers to civilian is much higher than what it was earlier. And interaction with people from a different place who may not know the local language, who may not be, be wearing the, the local dress is more important than ever before. And that is why the collective goal of internal training at every stage and continuous training is more important. Gone are the days when a police officer was used to get trained at the time of recruitment. Now perhaps every three months there is a need to upgrade our skills at all levels. The demogra demographic diversity of India itself is a major challenge as we are the most diverse country 
with 22 official recognized languages never before in india there was so much of inter state mobility for job for business for education as it is happening now if we see mumbai delhi bangalore hyderabad and all big cities the percentage of population of people coming from outside is increasing every year human trafficking another issue which is a major challenge <clears throat> so it is not just challenge of the police department of various leadership levels but it is a challenge to the society as someone said that every cop is a policeman and every policeman is every every citizen is a cop and every cop is a citizen this can only happen with more and more awareness so that preventive measures are taken at the society by each and every citizen this can only happen by creating more workshop successive and good use of media and press and talking about these challenges last few things which i would like to mention is <clears throat> recently a book became very famous factfulness by hans rosling it it talks about critical thinking at challenging and difficult times and how the factor of fear governs our thinking the factor of <clears throat> actually things may not be bad but as it is projected by social media as it is projected by media it becomes more bad and that leads to a sense of fear that lends let that leads to a sense of negative instinct these are the bigger challenges than detection of a crime the fear instinct the size instinct because what is seen is considered to be big the generalization instinct everything is generalized if one person wearing a particular kind of cap is doing an offense it is generalized urgency instinct same thing is seen 10 times from morning to evening at all the 10 channels and we feel it is very urgent actually it is not therefore policing is not just an institution of rules regulations and discipline but it should be like the feeling of a parenting how a parent discipline a child and at the same time allows him or her to grow the society as a whole is the bigger policeman than the police department and the parenting aspect has to get more and more predominant anxiety stress fear of failure these are natural response to any external stimuli what we do with these feeling makes us a better leader or an average leader and that is what is more required one bad chapter in life does not mean that the story is over the purpose of this talk was just to tickle that feeling of urgency the feeling of sensitivity and i am really grateful to all of you for giving me a patient hearing thank you so much friends normally i don't come back you know but <laughs> but i must uh, what should i say congratulate and thank uh sri anjani kumar for a most thought provoking and most comprehensive review of contemporary policy it is uh, very instructive for the young police uh, officers who are here i hope they have noted some of these points in fact he laid down the contours of modern crime and terror attacks uh, with such detail uh, i haven't uh, really heard this type of exposition from a police officer in the past each one of the incidents mentioned by him should be a case study in the police academy 
you know, you have mentioned so many instances. What exactly happened? How to tackle that if it happens again? I think these are all, uh, you know, subjects for case study. The National Police Academy should incorporate some of the points made by you in their training schedules. I think this is a very important, uh, uh, you know, speech you have made. And uh, uh, you, ultimately, you mentioned about the factor of uh, fear. This is a very important concept, you know. So you covered many, many other things. I don't want to mention that. Uh, but, you know, we would like to publish this uh, paper of yours after you edit it and give it to us in our ASCII magazine, which has a huge circulation, you know. So we would like to do that. In fact, uh, for this particular uh, uh, memorial lecture, we have collected all the former speeches also by Kiran Bedi and uh, uh, Justice, uh, this one. So um, I just got up to say that it's the most comprehensive uh, review you have given. And I think the Police Training Academy, the National Police Training Academy, should take note of what you have mentioned here. And then make case studies, you know, some of these things. So thank you once again for the most excellent uh, uh, presentation you have made. Now I request our chairman to present the memento to Sri Anjani Kumar. I invite Mr. Rajnikan Surat to deliver the formal vote of thanks. Respected Chairman Sri Padmanabhai Garu. Director General Nirmalaya Bhaji Garu, Sri Anjani Kumar Garu, DGP Telangana, and guests. Good evening, everybody. It is an honor to be a part of this event. I am Rajani Khan, eldest son of late Sri Venugopal Rao. For the last 50 years, I have been in Bombay, although I got my degree of collective engineering in Usmani University. But I'm regularly visiting Hyderabad, and I'm in touch with all our relatives and friends. The Administrative Staff College of India has a very good name in India and abroad due to the excellent management and teamwork. I am thankful to the organization for giving me an opportunity to give a vote of thanks. I wish to thank Sri Padmanabhai Garu, Chairman, Sri Nirmalai Bachi Garu, and Sri Anjani Kumar Garu for the interesting speeches. In especially thankful to Sri Anjani Kumar, who gave an excellent oration on policing in a changing society, which was very interesting. Here, I feel I must say a few things about my father, Priyas Venugopal Rao. He used to work very seriously and do his and discharge his duties, and at the same time, study a lot and make notes on crime, policing, etc. At the same time, he used to spend time with family and also enjoy with friends who are very dear to him. His time management 
was really excellent. As, you, as a young person, I used to ask him, why you think so much? He used to say, human intellect is very great. And the more we churn it, more we use it, use, and there is so much to learn and understand. I really used to wonder what you were saying. After many years, now I feel the human spirit, which causes the mind and intellect, is full of knowledge. And unfortunately, we tap very little. Thank you very much for making me, giving me a chance, opportunity to do this. And thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, the program is finally formally over. We may disperse. Thank you. Thank you very much.